He said, although we are saved, yes, I believe that we are saved. But what I found out is that there are many people that are saved, but they are not delivered. Mm -hmm. Saved, go to heaven, but come. Jesus Christ gave us a classic example there in John chapter 11, when he says that his friend Lazarus was sick. Martha says, go call the man, go call the master. Master, your friend, he's sick. Jesus decided, I'm not going. Stay a few more days. Lazarus died. And Jesus got there. He asked, where did they lay him? He went to the tomb. And he looked at Lazarus. In a loud voice, the scripture says, he commanded the dead man to come to life. That's what he did with us. You who had to quit who were dead yes. in trespasses and in sin. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. He says, Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus came out of the tomb. Please hear me. He came out of the tomb wrapped up like a mummy. He had life. He was saved. But he was not free. He was still bound by the grave wrappings. And Jesus looked at his disciples. Jesus didn't lose him. Jesus, Pastor Ewan, did not lose him. All Jesus did is save him. You look at the scriptures. Jesus says, Lazarus, come forth. And he came forth. Life came into his being. But he was still bound. And Jesus looked at the disciples, which tells me that Jesus looked at the church and said to the church, you lose him. You lose him. Right there in your Bible, Jesus said, you free him. Break the chains. That's what he held him. Lose him and let him go. What I have found no pastor times is that I have been to some churches that instead of us free and loosing people, we are wrapping them tighter. Oh, my the great cross. I have been to church. See in the bucket. I'm not seeing my offering bucket sit go on somewhere. But seeing the bucket pass and they collected the offering. And you perhaps have been to some church. And after they the offering, before the preacher takes the mic, another offering has to be taken. And before he preaches, another offering needs to be. Now, my question about this is, and you can help me, please. Did you go up and work after you gave the first, the first offering and collect a paycheck and come again and give a second offering? And after you get that offering, did you go back out and work and then come back again and give? So what we have done is that we put ATM machines in the church. I want you to hear me. Jesus said, my house shall be called a house of, but you have made it a den of thieves. So we have left a stigma on the people. Now whenever the church or the pastor talks about money, people do so quick. The pastor is again talking about money because he wants to take money out of my pocket. Not this church. Because I firmly believe if the people are blessed, then their families are blessed. If their families are blessed, their churches are blessed. If the churches are blessed, then the community is blessed. It begins with our home. So our responsibility is to lose. Come on, say what? Say please. Is to lose. The prophet says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Observe, he's not talking about people in the world. He's speaking about the church folks. The church folks are being destroyed because we have learned to manage property. We're not trying to break it. We are tr uh, trying to get by by living in poverty. And 
I'm not a prosperity preacher. I believe what God says about me is true. I believe it. And I believe that God wants his people to be blessed. Amen. Come on, come on. Amen. And now, now for those of you who want to debate with me, turn the Bible please to the book of the Luke, sorry, the Gospel of St. Luke chapter 4 verse 18. Can somebody grab on the screen, please? Luke chapter 4 verse 18. Luke, no, thank you. Luke chapter 4 verse 18. Thank you, Sadi. Probably some of the technical difficulties right there. Luke chapter 4 verse 18. Let's see what the scripture says. Jesus Christ speaking. He says these words. Luke 4 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Jesus speaking. He says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me to what? To preach. I want you to say to me, please. To preach. Come on, say please. Good news. <laughs> he came to bring good news. Good news. I'm not quite sure if you ever had a bill and on the last payment they send you the title of your car and says pay it in full. <laughs> what do you feel, man? I don't get that bill anymore. Oh, hallelujah. Good news. He says, God has anointed me, his son, to come into this world and to bring good news to people who have been held in captivity for years. So the ignorance that has enslaved them have been sent to. Come on, to proclaim freedom for the prisoners. Will you serve me, please? The curse of poverty has to go. Just has to go. Because Jesus came to release me. Yes, he told the church to loose Lazarus. But he came and he placed into the hands of the church the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Matthew chapter 16. He says, Behold, I give you the keys to unlock some prison doors. Brothers and sisters. Those keys is not for us to walk around with a bunch of keys and says, I got keys. Ah, that's authority to what? To unlock prison doors. Yeah. Open up some doors so that we can experience the life that Christ came to offer us. Continue, please. And what? Cut me of sight. Goodbye. And to release or to set the oppressed. People who are experiencing poverty have always been oppressed. Mm -hmm. And believe you me, my heart reaches out to those of you that are single heads of household, has to work two and three jobs just to keep the roof over their head, food on the table. It's just a lot of responsibility. But Jesus Christ came to help us. So let us walk through a few scriptures before we dismiss. I only have a few more minutes before I close up today. I want you guys to hear what a brother says about money. Can I can't borrow some money, please? Anybody got some money around here? Oh, thank you. Oh, this is some real money. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> it's not a Ben Franklin, but this is what came in. Praise God. Real money. I want you all to listen. What money is saying, please pay attention to what I have in my hand. Money, money, this thing, money. There's a brother by the name of Roy O. Jones. He wrote this about money. Money is saying to us, you hold me in your hand and you call me yours. <laughs> Yet, may I not as well call you mine. 
See how easily I rule you? To gain me, you will all but die. I am invaluable as rain. Essential as water. Without me, says my men and institutions will die. Yet I do not hold the power of life over oh, them. I'm futile without the stamp of your desire. I go nowhere unless you send me, says my. I keep strange company. <laughs> I keep strange company. For me, Mary said, men mock. For me, they love. For me, they scorn their very own character. Mary says, yet I am appointed to the service of the saints. To give education to the growing mind and food for the starving bodies of the unfortunate. My power is terrific, says mine. Handle me carefully and wisely, lest you become my slave rather than I yours. Powerful statement. Mine. That Paul says to Timothy, the love of money happens to be the root of all evil. Our cemeteries are filled with people who are being killed because of money. Young men were shot to the corner of Washington Street and Melville Avenue. Two young boys tried to rob him. He did not even have $200 on him. And they shot him dead cold because of money. Now, that family is grieving because that family have lost their father, their provider, and the young children, those two young boys who shot him, their families are also grieving because they are put away because of the love of money. That Solomon said these words that money answered all things. So if money answered all things, it means that money is essential for men to function. Can I have amen? amen? But seemingly, by the way that we live in a society where greed has seems to be the trend of the day. So everybody wants more. Have you observed? Go to the gas pump. One day, the gas is X amount of dollars. Next two days, the same gas, the same gas station, all of it is heard that there's going to be a shortage next year. And what they did? Crazy price. Greed. Greed. Have you ever tried to take money from someone who is wetting? Let's say Mr. Trump should come here and say, Mr. Trump, can I have $10, please? And I will pay you back tomorrow at 9.59. I want to know at 9.59, Mr. Trump will be waiting right there for his money. And if you don't get him, you and Mr. Trump will have a conversation. So greed is driving everything. You can barely live in Boston. Come on, talk to me. A one bedroom apartment. You can barely put a twin size bed inside there. You try to buy, forget rent. Because rent is more expensive than mortgage. It's all greed driven. All because of the love of money. And I know that this is the season after we complete our taxes. And Uncle Sam says, let me give you back what I owe you. And as Uncle Sam gives us back our little pennies, many of us are thinking, well, oh, here comes the storm. Yes. Yes. So we are thinking that, man, 
You know how long I want to get a pair of sneakers? Cost a hundred and fifty dollars because finally I got that money. So we think that I'm going to buy a pair of sneakers for hundred and fifty dollars. And you know that your bank account is in the red. <laughs> so we have decided, Pastor Thomas, with the wisdom that God has given to us, especially to me as a pastor, that it's my responsibility to teach. As the scripture says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon us. So therefore, inside of destiny, we did what is called a gift analysis. And we found out that among us that there are individuals who can help us break the curse of poverty. It's not just me praying for you. But there are some things that must be done. There are some habits that we must embrace. 20% of you believe it. There are some things that we've got to do. So, I dreamed a song that some change me. It's not just changing me inside my soul, but change me the way I'm handling money. Come and talk to me, brother and sister. I'm trying to get you to come out of the hole. I talk about credit cards. No, no, I wouldn't talk about credit cards. Pastor Donna. Pastor Donna, amen. amen. On Wednesday evening, we have asked Pastor Donna, who is gifted, went to school for this area, companion servant of God, to come before us and to teach us how to break the curse of poverty. Right. Pastor Donna, every Wednesday night, for one hour, one hour, 15 minutes or so, she's taking her time and teaching us how money should go for us and not be working for money. That's not like good news to me. Yes. And therefore, she's giving handouts. Yes. I make sure I'm sitting in the front row. Yes. Yes. Because the curse of poverty, I'm saying this to you, yes. has been handed down from generation to generation to generation. Yes. I'm talking to some of you, and you are looking at yourself and saying, I desperately need that information. I came and tell at last. I'm able to go to McDonald's and get me some hamburger and some french fries. Because I am living from paycheck to paycheck to paycheck. As a matter of fact, before the money comes in, it's done. And therefore, when it comes time for you and I to be obedient, to the Lord's commandment, bring ye all the tithes into the stars. Yes, your heart is good, and you want to bring the tithes, but your lights are about to cut off. Come on, let's be me. Let's take the mask off. Your lights are about to cut off. Your water bill is about to be shut off, and your mortgage, the bank is saying, if you don't pay me. And I know you're looking at Pastor Cooper and saying, hey, Pastor Cooper, you got a bunch of money. Uh -uh. I want you to know. I have to break this off too. So it's a mindset that got to be changed. For the scripture says, as a man thinks, something has got to change inside. Because I realize that money does not solve, or money does not really break property. That may be shocking to you. It doesn't matter if you have as much money as Steve Jobs, who died at 58 from cancer. Millions of dollars, perhaps billion here. There are people who have no money, but they are happy. They are happy. <laughs> Come on. They have no money. They have no credit cards. But man, you see them a smile on their face. I mean, and they cook men, they can take off and you food and feed the whole village. And they ain't got no money. I'm telling you, because back in the Caribbean where I am from, in my village, some of you know what I'm talking about, from my community. I, I don't know when, or my parents, I, if I told my parents, that, Ma, do you have a thousand dollars? They'll ask me, 
thousand dollars. That sounds like a million dollars to them. They don't know what a thousand dollars is. They would have ten dollars and make that ten dollars look like a hundred dollars. They know what it is. They can stretch. And yet, folks would come to our home and they never leave empty handed. And my mother had ten of us. Seven boys and three girls. You see, there was no TV in those days. Anyway, my mother knew exactly how to make it work. Raising seven boys and three girls, we always looked clean. Our clothes were always washed, and there was no washing machine. I mean, I mean, just. My house always had food. And she did not go to PJs. There were no PJs in those days. Whatever she got, the whole village. Okay. And we didn't have. And today, we, the Lord has blessed us to migrate to this beautiful United States of America. We have an abundance of supply. Have you ever watched the stuff that these Restaurant throw out? Yes. And the close of the day? Yeah. Look at all that food. We waste and waste and waste. We talk about how to manage our resources better. What do you do? Try to come out on Wednesday night. April 10th. Pastor Donna will continue teaching how to break Get of credit cards. Oh, oh. Come on, put your hands together for that. Amen. Amen. Pastor Donna has that material after material, that is, and she's taking her time. And in that session, you can get to ask her any question. Pastor Donna, can I have a private time with you, please? I don't want everybody to know that I owe everybody. I just want <laughs> to have a time with you. Pastor Donna, who is a pastor in this church, will gladly make the time to sit with you and help you, and everything that you share with that pastor is confidential. Amen. You never have to be afraid. Uh, she's a pastor, so she's going to tell everybody inside of destiny. Ah, ah, ah. Confidential. Our job is to release you from the curse of poverty. Yes. Bye,